with version 28, OBS has released a major update. I know it's not super fresh news, but why did I wait so long to do a video on the new version 28 of OBS? Well, because there are a few things that you have to be aware of before you decide to jump into it. If you're new to OBS, then it's a no-brainer. Just go and install it. And then go check out my OBS for Professional Zoom Presentations Masterclass, link in the description below. But if you're currently using version 27, and you're happy with how things are working, then you may want to wait before you update. So let's go see why, and then let's have a look at all the new features of version 28. If this is your first time with OBS, then go to obsproject.com and then download it and install it. If you instead are on OBS version 27, then open it. A message will pop up telling you that there is an update available. But before you click on update, just wait a second. A major reason why you may not want to update is that not all plugins are compatible yet. There is an official web page where you can check which plugins have been updated. Many of them have, but actually two very important ones have not. The first one is the NDI plugin, and the second one is the very popular StreamFX plugin. So if you're relying on these two plugins to deliver your presentation, then stop. Things are evolving pretty quickly, and by the time you watch this video, then things may have changed. That's why you should go check the plugin update page right now. If these hurdles have been removed, then go ahead and update. Now, drum roll, I'll click on update. As a first thing, I get a notification, just confirming that some plugins may not be compatible with OBS 28. Told you. And these are the plugins that I've been using but are outdated now, so I will have to update them. Told you. I'll do that in a second, but let's first see how the new OBS looks like. I'll be focusing on the main changes that impact us who want to use OBS for professional remote presentations. The first change is pretty clear. There's a new theme. It just looks more modern and fresh. Maybe just a little bit less scary for beginners. There are actually a few available themes that you can choose from now. So by going to File, Settings and General, then after the first language option, we see the theme option. Yummy is the new default. But then we have Acre, Dark, which is the previous classic theme, Grey, Light, Rockney, and system. Let's stay with Yami now. I'll create a new scene and add a browser source. And I will include my website. I have the cookie pop-up showing, and obviously I want to get rid of it. Now there is a new function that allows you to interact with the web source. Right here on top of the sources panel, there is this interact button that will open the web source with which you'll be able to interact with. I can get rid of the pop-up and also navigate the site. And with the refresh button, you can refresh the source. One of the most useful new features are the positioning guides with pixel distance. Now for whatever source you have on the output window, you can see the distance from the borders. You can further select three options in the general settings. Snap sources to edge of screen, snap sources to other sources, and snap sources to horizontal and vertical center. If you have this enabled, whenever you're close to the center or to the border or to another source, then you will have this cool snap effect that will guide you in the positioning of the source. And now sources can also be rotated directly from the output window. I know you could do that before, but you had to go to edit, transform, etc. Now it's much easier. If you're liking the video so far and want to help me grow my channel, please subscribe and hit the like button so more people will have the chance to watch it. Thank you. A small change in the audio mixer are these two buttons at the bottom. Clicking on the cogwheel now allows a quicker way to access the advanced audio properties. Not a big change, but still useful. This other button in the audio mixer panel allows you to switch between horizontal and vertical layout. We also notice a new cogwheel close to the virtual camera button. Here you can choose the output type and select internal or scene and the output selection. Besides the theme, the graphic user interface can further be customized. Go to File, Settings and then Accessibility. And here you can change a few colors, like the source border, when you select it, crop it or hover over it. And then you can change a few colors in the mixer. Let's go back to default. One important new feature is the addition of a new source type. That's the application audio capture. It basically allows you to have separate audio sources for each application. You're not forced to have all the desktop audio coming in, but you can select the specific audio for each single application. 
For example, if I open a PowerPoint and I have some audio playing in it, then I can add the audio associated to that application. The next feature is another useful practical one. Before, if you were modifying your camera settings and then you were relaunching OBS, then you were starting from zero. Now your camera settings can be saved. And there is also good news for Apple users. Now there is Apple native support for M1 and M2 processors. There are various new other features, like the divide video recordings automatically by dimension, then the full integration with Nvidia Broadcast, and others that for the moment I think are a little bit less interesting for professional online presentations. Now that you know all the new features with the new version of OBS, it's time to further increase your OBS presentation presentation skills by watching this next video here.